devastating news for Carolina. Panthers wide receiver Kelvin Benjamin has a torn ACL and will miss the entire season. Benjamin went down in practice Wednesday when he tried to make a cut against Miami defensive back Don Jones on a play in which there was no contact. As a rookie last year, Benjamin was Cam's go-to guy, targeting him more than any other receiver on the Panthers. Only six other players were targeted more than Benjamin last season in the entire league. Stephen A., what impact will this have on Cam? I think it's going to be a devastating blow because I think that was, I, I essentially view Carolina as, as pretty much having two weapons. Him and Greg Olson, both of them 1,000-yard receivers last year. Olson, your tight end. Kelvin Benjamin is your primary receiver. They drafted this kid, Devin Funches, but, uh, you know, again, you drafted him. He's a rookie. You don't know what he's going to give you. And I'm looking at a 10 kid junior who returned. I'm looking at a couple of the other pieces that they have. They've got guys that, you know, like a Jericho Cotri or somebody, got to probably have one year left. This is the way that they're being viewed. And so when I look at it from that perspective, this office was clearly going to be about Cam, about Kelvin Benjamin and Greg Olson. And the fact that Benjamin is down, uh, leaves them minus a significant weapon. And when you, comp when you add to that the fact that you've got a defense that's no longer ranked number two in the entire NFL like it was a, a, a few years back, they were 21st last year. Um, I just look at it from the standpoint that Cam really, really has an immense amount of pl pressure placed on his shoulders where with the new contract, the pressure of it all or whatever, he's going to literally have to be a do-it-all kind of guy. And it's just a shame uh, that you got a young stud like him with all the capabilities that, ha that Cam has. And he's got to be out there on an island essentially by himself uh, with little to no guy, uh, with little to no um you know, artillery to really uh, have at his disposal. It's just, um, it's an unfortunate situation, to be quite honest with you. And I think they can, that, that Carolina is going to suffer even more. Remember, they're coming off a 7-8 in one season. They weren't that great to begin with last year. And I'm really wondering what they're going to be able to do now. Mm -hmm. I'll give you it's a blow, but I do not think it's a devastating blow. And you mentioned Devin Funches. I'm a fan. And I know he's a rookie, but so is Kelvin Benjamin. You know, he like, play. yeah, Funches every time, again, you know how I am. I just watch the game, flip back and forth. Every time I flipped on a Michigan game, it seems like for the last three years, Funches jumped off my screen. At the combine, he ran 4 7. They said he dropped too many balls over his three years. I think he had 20 combined drops. All I know is he just kept making plays, and he's 6'4, 225. Kelvin Benjamin, 6'5", 245. So is he that? No, he's not that. But, but I think he's going to be pretty good, even as a rookie. I think he'll be pretty good. We all like Greg Olson. I, I agree with you, Ted Ginn, Kotchery. Do you maybe bring in an at-the-end Reggie Wayne? I don't know what they'll do. I, I assume they have to bring in somebody, one of those veterans still left out on the market. But here's my bottom line. I have a lot of respect for our fantasy wizard, Matthew Barry. This morning I saw him on SportsCenter saying, hey, I'm, I'm not going to drop Cam in my fantasy quarterback rankings. I have him 12th. I'm going to keep him right there around that 12th spot because Cam can do it with his legs. And, and it's not like he had a dynamic group of receivers to start with. So, I, I, again, Stephen A., I, I don't know what... It, 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 is that a devastating blow? It, I, again, I'm going to bet on Matt Barry saying he's still the 12th ranked fantasy quarterback, so that's not devastating to me. I think they'll be about what they always have been, where they rely mostly on defense and running game, which heavily includes Cam's running game. Well, keep in mind, Funches can play. And I'm not saying that Kelvin Benjamin is devastating just because you lost Kelvin Benjamin. I'm looking at the weapons that Cam Newton has around him. Back in the day, Skip, they had D'Angelo Williams and Jonathan Stewart. Yeah. Now they just have Jonathan Stewart because D'Angelo Williams is in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Jonathan Stewart has missed 20 games over the last three years. That's why he was split. That's why he was splitting yeah. carries. Now that the, hard, the, prim the, the primary workload is going to be placed in his shoulders, well, if you were missing 20 games over the last three years, which is an average of more than six a season, if you were missing those games when you were splitting carries, how are you going to do now that the workload is primarily on your shoulders? And so when I look at it from that perspective, again, you need a bevy of weapons, and I don't know if they have it. That's my concern about Carolina right now, not to mention the fact that even though I have 
mad respect for Ron Rivera as a defensive mind. I don't think he's a great coach offensively. Yeah. I think some of the limitations that that Cam Newton has is because Ron Rivera is his head coach. I think he needs a more offensive-minded coach, to be quite honest with you, somebody who can teach him a few things. With all of that being said, I just think he's at a decided disadvantage, and he's being asked to do a lot more than he should be asked to do. And I think it's going to end up working against him. <sighs> that is fair. I don't think it got all that much worse, but I agree with your overall premise. He's being asked to do a whole lot. If they do try to pick someone up, you guys mentioned Reggie Wayne's available, some other notable wide receivers, Wes Welker, Brandon Lloyd, Donnie Avery, Santana Moss, and Robert Meacham. But let's spin this forward now. The NFC South is always up for grabs. Last year, the Panthers were the first team in NFC South history to win the division in back-to-back -back seasons. So what are the chances, Skip, that Carolina can three-peat here as division champs with this loss? I don't love their chances this time, Stephen A., for all the reasons you just so eloquently stated. Carolina won by default last year at 7, 8, and 1. You, you mentioned their defense. In yards allowed, they were the 10th ranked NFL defense, just in yards, not in points, but in yards, which was decent enough, mm -hmm. I yep. think, to, to get them just barely over the top in the worst division, I think, in pro football. Last year, New Orleans was 7 and 9. We've got the, the Sean Payton interview now running on SportsCenter, in which he says Drew Brees was hurt last year, had a torn oblique muscle couldn't practice enough. He's 100% healthy this year. Does that put New Orleans back over the top to the top of the division? I, I don't think so because their defense ranked 31st last year in lar yards allowed, and I don't know that it's going to be a whole lot better. Atlanta has the new coach and Dan Quinn, but they were 6-10 and 10 last year. They ranked 32nd in overall yards allowed last year. I don't know if they're going to be significantly better, which brings me to the team I'm most intrigued by. The Tampa Bay Bucks with a rookie quarterback. I'm going to give them a real shot to win this division this year, and you can call me crazy if you want, but with Lovey Smith coaching this team, it has to be better, way better than 2 and 14, because there's way too much talent here. You know Vincent Jackson, you know Mike Evans, you got the two big stud receivers to throw to. I'm a big Doug Martin fan. He was nicked up last year. He still played, what was it, 11, played 11, games. 11 games? But he wasn't himself. The offensive line has been nicked and knacked and beaten up, and it's still not great. But on defense, you got three studs to build around. You got Gerald McCoy, who's been on this show before. You got Levante David, they just gave a big new contract to. These are Pro Bowl caliber defenders, and Altron Werner is a stud at cornerback. They have to be better. Jameis Winston, for all of his flaws and all the interceptions he threw last year in college and for the, the poor plays that he made early in his very first NFL preseason game the, uh, last week, he was 26-1 and one in college. 26-1. and one. The kid is a winner. The kid has not a good mind. He has a great quarterback IQ mind. And I think he's going to adapt quickly. He may get off to a little bit of a slow start, but I think he will finish strongly even in his rookie year, which is why I am giving Tampa Bay to be the surprise team of the NFL this year. I like that bold prediction. Stephen A., since we're giving out predictions, who do you have winning the NFC South? You know what? If I had to pick today, I reserve the right to change my mind. Yes, but I'm thinking, the, I'm thinking the Atlanta Falcons. Wow. Um, I, I, you that know, that might all, be bolder Quinn, than mine. Listen, we... Yeah, I think so. I mean, you look at Quinn, obviously he's coming from the Legion of Boom in Seattle. Um, I'm going to give him a lot of credit for what their defense was able to do over the last couple of years and what he was able to establish there. And I'm going to say they're not going to be the 32nd ranked defense in the NFL this time around. I think that they're going to be ready to roll. That's number one. Number two, I think that when you look at them offensively, listen, we have questions about whether Matt Ryan deserves to be in the top 10 or whatever. But the mere fact that there's a question mark means that the brother can play a little bit. He's got a $103.75 million contract for a reason. So when I look at Matt Ryan, I say to myself, Julio Jones, fresh off for a 1,500-yard uh, season, uh, uh, Roddy White, who caught 80 receptions last year for right under 1,000 yards. Those two, with Devontae Freeman expected to do some things this year coming out of the backfield, I'm going to sit there and look at Atlanta, and I'm going to say they got a shot. Remember, the division winner last year was 7, 8, and 1. <laughs> mm -hmm. yep. As far as I'm concerned, the entire division is a crapshoot. 
I think it's up for grabs. And I say, why not Atlanta with Julio Jones and Roddy White? If they can stay healthy, okay, I think Matt Ryan has his targets. And I think he'll be able to do some damage. Matty Ice. All right, so we have Tampa Bay and Atlanta. I don't know how Huda Nation feels about all mm. this. Cam, not so lucky. As for Andrew They love Luck, Jimmy Graham. Yep. Yes. He is uh, lucky to not have more picks. We'll explain that one after the break. Stay here. This is First Take.